So I'm stressing out, and I'm on the phone with Melissa, who is my very bestest of best friends in the whole world. And she's saying to me, Mandy, calm down. It's really not that big a deal. Let's just talk about the problem. Okay, well, the problem is that I think this thing tonight might be a date. And um, I think I might want it to be a date. And she says, well, that all sounds like good news. Which is a crazy thing to say, because who in their right mind thinks that that sounds like good news? <laughs> so there's this guy, Patrick. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and we've, you know, we've been in the same circles for a while, but recently I moved into his neighborhood and we've started spending a little more time together. And, you know, at first I just kind of thought like, ooh, fun new neighbor, that's great. Um, but the last time we hung out, it felt a little different. And now he's invited me over for dinner. So I said to Melissa, I just, I'm really not good at this sort of thing. I don't, like, I don't have moves, you know? I don't, like, know how to make things happen. She says, that's okay. You don't, you know what, you don't, you don't need to have moves. It's fine. If it's gonna happen, it'll happen organically. Just, you know, just be open and receptive if he makes any moves. Okay. Um, how do I know if he's making any moves? <laughs> What does that look like? So she broke it down for me, bless her. <laughs> and she said, you know, it, like you'll kind of find ways of, you know, being in each other's physical space and you'll like, you know, touch hands or, you know, brush whatever and just like, <laughs> just be open to that. <laughs> so, so it's the night of the maybe date. And I go over to his place and we eat and we drink and we laugh and we're having a really good time. And then uh, we're gonna watch a movie. So I go and make popcorn on the stove and I burn the crap out of it. And so he comes over to help me. And when he comes over to help me, he puts his hand on my back. And then later we're watching the movie and we're sitting kind of close and like our legs are touching and we're kind of cuddled into each other a little. And I'm thinking, this might be moves. <laughs> and, um, and then he asks me, so uh, do you want a massage? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, I think that's almost definitely a move. <laughs> well, it was a move uh, and it worked. <laughs> and we, <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> so we had a really good time. Um, and then we started dating. Uh, and it was really great. We just had a lot of fun together. I really felt like I could be myself. And we laughed a lot. And it was light. And it was playful. And it was like really silly, but also really sexy. Uh, it was awesome. But there was this one thing hanging over us, which was that it was the start of the year, and we knew that at, in August, I was gonna be moving away for a year to the UK. So after a couple months of dating, we had the conversation. And my stance on it was, you know, this is just going really well. Like, let's just, let's just see what happens. You know, we'll keep going, we'll give it a shot, and like, maybe we'll do long distance, maybe we won't do long distance, but let's just like, get there and see, and we'll figure it out. And he said, I can't do it. I know I can't do long distance, and I can't really lean into this knowing that it's gonna end. So we broke up. But, here's a but, you know, I wasn't leaving for a couple months still, and you know, we're in the same neighborhood, and every couple of weeks I'd reach out to him, or he'd reach out to me, and you know, we'd end up getting together, and so we were sort of seeing each other, but not really seeing each other, and that was okay, because, you know, that was all that we could be, it was, you know, the best possible option in the circumstances, and, you know, it was, it was fine, it was probably for the best anyways, really. So August comes, and I leave for the UK, 
and now we're fully broken up. But I think about him a lot. And if I'm truly honest with myself, towards the end there, I started having this sneaking suspicion that I might love him a little. <laughs> Which I definitely wasn't gonna tell him because that would not do any good for anybody at all. And so while I'm gone, you know, we're in touch a little bit from time to time. He calls me on my birthday because he always calls me on my birthday. But mostly we're done. Time passes, he gets a new girlfriend. They move in together. I hear about it and I'm secretly devastated. But you know, we're in different parts of the world. It's, it's done and passed. Oh, I feel like you guys are really on my side. <laughs> So more time passes, and I finish up my time in the UK, and I move home. I don't reach out because I know that he's with somebody. But he calls me on my birthday, because he always calls me on my birthday. And when we talk, it feels exactly the way that it's always felt. It's easy, and it's fun, and I laugh a lot, and it's funny, and it's great. But it is what it is. Until one night, I am uh, browsing on OkCupid. <laughs> and I'm slowly feeling my soul die inside my body, as sometimes happens with online dating. <laughs> and his profile pops up. And my heart stops. I immediately call Melissa. She doesn't pick up, so I leave a very frantic voicemail, and, <laughs> and I also text her and WhatsApp her and email her, all with many exclamation points, <laughs> until she finally calls me back. And she's like, okay, Manny, are you okay? Like, what is going on? Are you okay? Melissa, do you know why Patrick would be on OkCupid right now? Silence. Huh. She says, I don't. Hang on, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> she hangs up the phone, and I wait 15 agonizing minutes, during which time I read everything on the profile multiple times over and Im imagine many, many possible scenarios. <laughs> and she calls me back. She says, okay, I've got the deal. I call them up. I've been meaning to check in on him for a while, so it was super casual, no big deal. Just, you know, we chatted, we caught up. I happened to ask him uh, about his girlfriend. He told me they broke up. Now my heart drops into my stomach. Melissa, what do I do? <laughs> Melissa knows me very well. So she very wisely said, Mandy, you do nothing. It just happened. It's very recent. Don't do anything. You're doing great. Just leave it alone. Just, you know, in a couple months, maybe you guys can, you know, get in touch. But for now, just leave it. So we get off the phone. And I immediately pull up a chat thread to Patrick. <laughs> and I type, Hey, friend. <laughs> Funny story. I was browsing OkCupid, okay blush emoji, <laughs> and your face popped up, and I just wanted to check in and see if everything is okay. <laughs> and I hit send. And I wait, and I wait, and then the three little dots pop up. And he writes back, and he says, Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we broke up, but, you know, it's, it's pretty recent, but I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm cool. And so I write back, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. <laughs> if you ever want to, like, grab a drink <laughs> to commiserate, <laughs> or if you just, you know, if you want someone to, like, distract you and talk about totally different things, <laughs> I'm here, just let me know. So 
So eventually he, he did reach out and he came over to my place for dinner and we talked and we laughed and we drank and he put his hand on my back <laughs> and we started dating again. And it was good. I mean, there were times when it was really great and it didn't take long before there was no denying that I was definitely in love with this person and also was definitely not going to tell him because he totally couldn't handle it. But at the same time, you know, we didn't actually spend all that much time together and he would sometimes disappear from communication for days on end without any warning. And he didn't really all that often remember to ask how I was doing. And one day he's telling me about this trip he's going on that he's super excited for, which I was not invited to join, by the way. And he's like, he's got all his plans in place, everything set up, it's gonna be great. All he has to do is book his ticket, he's booked, he's um, picked his dates, he just has to book the ticket, he's going to China for three weeks, it's gonna be amazing, he's leaving on April 3rd. Well, April 3rd is my birthday. So it starts to become apparent that as much as I'm definitely in love with this person, he's not really what I'm looking for in a partner. And he probably never will be. And more importantly, it doesn't seem like he really wants to be. So we break up again. And we don't... <laughs> and we don't see each other for six whole months. Then, you know, we cross paths, we reconnect, and we end up seeing each other, but not seeing each other occasionally, very, very occasionally. And this time it really is okay, because I now know that he can't be what I want. And I know the limitations, and I can just enjoy us for what we are. So one day we're lying in a hammock in my backyard, and we're cuddling and catching up. And he tells me this story. He says, remember my friend Susan, who kind of like always had a thing for me? I remember. <laughs> well, she told me she loves me. And like, I don't feel it back. I don't feel like, I don't have feelings for her like that. But it was, I kind of had this crazy reaction because it like really freaked me out. And then it freaked me out that that freaked me out so much. And it kind of became this whole spin out thing that I'm still processing and just kind of trying to figure out what that all means. But I just had this crazy reaction to it because it, it, it was really, it really freaked me out. And I got really quiet. <laughs> and in my head, I was thinking, what the hell is this? This girl gets to tell you that she loves you and you have to deal with it? This girl who you don't have a history with, who you've never gone out with and don't have feelings for, she tells you she loves you and now you're gonna have this big realization about not knowing how to be loved? This is bullshit. <laughs> I didn't say any of that. But I did go really quiet. <laughs> so he asked me what was wrong. And of course I said, nothing, nothing. Good, nothing's wrong. And he looked at me and he raised his eyebrows and he said, yeah, okay, uh, but what's wrong? So I told him no, that that story just made me really mad. And he said, why does that story make you mad? I said, well, because I, because I, you know, ugh. because I loved you first and I love you first and I never told you because you couldn't handle it. And when you tell someone you love them for the first time, it's like a really big moment. And it feels like, it felt like my heart was like on the floor in front of us, but like in a good way. It's like this outpouring of like true feeling that you're just like giving to the person. And there's, there was this intimacy and this vulnerability and it was electric and beautiful and amazing. And he pulled me close to him and he looked deep in my eyes and he kissed me and he snuggled us together and he said, I know. He didn't say it back to me and there's no part of me that thought that he was going to. 
and I didn't think it was gonna change anything about our relationship, and it didn't. But I'm still really glad I said it, just because it was true.